One of the great experiences I had was to attend a session at Princeton and listen to Hubert Allier. Hubert Allier was a professor of chemistry at Princeton and in fact loosely tailored the movie The Absent-Minded Professor after him. Hubert had many, many phenomenal stories about many of the people he worked with, but one of the most important lessons I got from him was something I use in my classroom and I would recommend that you use it. He said that students, even very intelligent students at Princeton, learn in small incremental blocks and that you have to go 15 to 20, maybe a few more minutes, and then take some kind of break to give them a momentary lapse. Now make sure you recognize, I said a momentary lapse. And I use this in my classroom quite a bit. But I want to make sure that those lapses are educational. So I have those lapses where I can incorporate songs, demonstrations, or other thinking activities. Now this is also emphasized for some of those teachers in block schedules, where they say in a block schedule of about an hour and a half, you need three separately diverse activities. So what I'm going to show today is something that I use as a momentary diversion because I want to get my students thinking, but yet still being actively engaged. So what I have here is a hexagon. And you can see it's red on one side and yellow on the other side. What's interesting about this is you can flex it like this, and guess what? You then take from the back side the yellow, and that comes to the front. Now if I flex it again, what do you think is going to happen? Well, of course, that's right, the blue comes out. You all knew that, right? And so if I flex and twist it again, let's repeat this for you. We get the red, we get the yellow, and yes, just like you thought, we get the orange, okay? Are you thoroughly confused yet? So with the orange, we lead to red, to yellow, to blue, and then we get our green. And just to repeat again, the yellow, the blue, the red, and of course we can't forget our sixth color, purple. And so what we have got here is a device that will take you through six completely different colors. What I find interesting about this is that this was originally worked on in about 1939 by a student, a graduate student at Princeton, last name of Stone, and they formed what we call a hexaflexagon committee, and they studied this with other people, a famous mathematician, Tukey, and Richard Feynman, who was a graduate student then. Of course, many of us recognize that Richard Feynman went on to get the Nobel Prize in Physics. But what we have here is something that the students want to grab, they want to try to figure out how it goes. And it's quite interesting because what we have is a triangle and another triangle and another triangle and another triangle and another triangle and it just keeps going on like this. And what we have are essentially 19 triangles in a pattern. Now you might see here where we have on this side blue, red, yellow, blue, red, yellow, blue, red, yellow, and on the other side we have purple, purple, green, green, and we have multiple colors. And this is not the complete set, but if you take the 18 of these with a fold and twist it together in a particular pattern that's explained in the write-up, you get this. Now, where do I also use this? I also use this where I have a single solution and I'm able to pour it in six different containers. It happens to be a single buffer solution into six different indicators getting these six different colors. So once again, I'm getting the chemistry from that. Going to books, if you've heard of Martin Gardner, this is one of his first books that he put out through Scientific American, and it's hexaflexagons and other mathematical diversions. And so you might be able to find this in the library, but if you want to have your students build their own hexaflexagon, that will be in the write-up. So think about adding this as a momentary diversion to give a small break to the students, but still keep them thinking. Good luck.